Saturday morning. It's kind of chilly outside. It's not raining or anything out there, even though that's a we're forecasting rain for the weekend. Uh, free to still asleep will be for another probably two hours. So I'm going to make uh, something that is the latest rage in all, every place with a drive-up window. A breakfast burrito. Uh, they all have different recipes for them, but they're all basically the same thing. It's food rolled, rolled in a tortilla, and uh, and they sell for three dollars or better, which is a ridiculous price for what it costs to make them. So uh, this is going to be a very short video on cooking. So I'm going to tell you a story after the video on the cooking. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the skillet with a little nonstick spray and then some frozen hash browns here. These are actually uh, have been french fries that we didn't eat and so I cut them up in small pieces and that should be about the right amount in there for that one big burrito. Let those hang in there and get happy. Okay, the potatoes are hot. Here's some chopped onion and ham. Now you can use any kind of meat that you want to in there. I just happen to have ham because I have that huge ham that I fixed the other day and I'll use it and I like ham. Uh, they use sausage, uh, ground beef, uh, chorizo, all kinds of meats in their uh, ones that they sell at the fast food places. And, uh, they all try to be different. Okay, that's cooking along very well. So I've got a beaten egg here that I'm going to pour in. save a few drops there on the end. I'll tell you why on that. And salt and pepper this. Okay, I've got a tortilla in the microwave up here. 20 seconds, that ought to be adequate for the tortilla. Yeah, it's good and hot. Well, it is hot. Spread it out there. And I told you I'd tell you what I was going to do with it. That last few drops of egg is put it along this back edge along here. And that will make the glue to hold it together. Now, this is done. So I'm going to take this up here. Leave the skillet on the there and got some cheese here, some grated cheese that goes in there. some piccata sauce. Got this from Whataburger here, I think it was. Little package be about the right amount. Thing is, it's not too terribly hot. Uh, I like 
a little bit more heat in mine than most people do, but you take what you can get. Now we, it's time to roll this burrito up. And I've told this story before about the uh, Taco Bell manager who said that he had 18 teenagers working for him. They all smoked pot and they could all roll a perfect joint, but not a one of them could roll a tortilla or a burrito. Pack that back in there a little. Roll this over here. Fold those ends in. And roll this up over that end with the raw egg on it. And then put that side down back in the skillet. And I'm going to toast that side of the burrito and seal it together. Well, there's my big breakfast burrito on the table, along with a cup of coffee and the cup, my favorite cup from the lady down in the South Texas who. She's such a nice lady, said she's one of my longtime subscribers and uh, just love her to pieces. Okay, let's see how this puppy tastes here. It looks good and nicely toasted. I didn't get anything but tortilla that bite. You know, I use a bigger tortilla to make the, this one than most of the uh, fast food places do. They use one about an inch smaller than this. I'm going to tell you. Well, I got some of the pecanji sauce and cheese, and it tastes ex ex excellent. Well, I'm going to finish my breakfast while it's still hot, and then I'll tell you the story. Okay, now for my story. Plain and simply, I was fired on my 50th birthday from Sears. And it was unplanned by me. I'm sure it was planned by Sears for several months. I was the manager of the installed home improvement division of Sears, uh, where we installed everything that we sold in the way of home improvements, everything from roofing to carpet to paint, bathroom remodels, air conditioning, heating systems, you name it, we put it in. And I had uh, probably 25 or 30 uh, independent contractors who worked for me on these jobs, and they did them on an individual basis. And that was my job. I had uh, come to the point with Sears where uh, any, there was no uh, promotions, and it was everything was lateral from there on. I didn't have a full college scholar, full college education, so which they required for anybody who moved up into store management or above. But uh, I wasn't going anywhere from there. <clears throat> but at any rate, uh, they told uh, the phone rang and. 
the boss's secretary says, Jim, come to the manager's office. I went up there and stepped through the door, and there sat the store manager, the assistant, the uh, security manager, the uh, personnel manager, and three suits I didn't recognize. And I said, and they say, say this ain't going to end well. It, it just can't. Uh, they introduced the guys from Chicago, and they said, we're here to tell you that Sears is going through a restructuring program, and we're going to do away with all the installed home improvements, and uh, so your job is ending. However, if you want to continue with Sears, you can transfer to Chicago to the tower, and we can have you be a sporting goods buyer. Well, there's three things in life I never wanted to do, and all three of them moved to Chicago. But uh, they said, we can do that, and you can stay with the company, or the program we can offer you will be what we call our 65-65 program, since you have a total of 70 points. That's uh, age plus years of service. And uh, the 65-65 program is you will uh, draw 65% of your salary until you're 65 years old. You'll keep your medical insurance, you'll keep your life insurance, your store discount, and uh, I couldn't hardly hold myself down to keep from jumping up and yelling, yay! So I took that, signed the papers, walked out of there. I didn't go back inside of Sears for several months after that. But the first thing I did was uh, I already owned some land in Black Forest, Colorado, so I, and I had a design for a house I wanted, so I started going up there and building on it. Then I started on and on doing odd jobs. The odd jobs were writing magazine articles, taking pictures, but mainly was uh, teaching flying, flying tow planes, and delivering airplanes. And I found out that delivering airplanes is quite a lucrative sideline because it seemed there's always an airplane someplace that needed to be somewhere else, and they were always looking for a qualified pilot who could, could and would fly it there for them and take care of it like it was their own airplane. And, uh, charge a reasonable amount. So, but I put together a series of flights there one time, and it consisted of flying from uh, Black Forest to Lexington, Kentucky, drop off an airplane there, go down to Melbourne Beach, which is a Piper Factory, Vero Beach, and pick up a new one there and deliver it back to. Uh, Dallas where I'd exchange it for a different airplane which I would take on to Billings, Montana. So that put together several flights there and it seemed like a good trip so I took Frida along with me and uh, I guess she enjoyed it, she seemed to, but at any rate uh, we had picked up the new airplane in Vero Beach and flew back and I needed to get a fuel stop before we could get to uh, Dallas. So I picked out Greenville, Mississippi. And I tried to pick smaller airports that had constant service at them because you could get in and out quicker there and less hassle. <clears throat> and I noticed it had a tower. And uh, uh, about 25 miles out, I called approach and Guy answered and he said, uh, Piper, you're cleared to land runway 36, which is the north runway. Uh, report downwind on tower frequency and gave me the frequency. I thought that was strange that I ever got a clearance to land from an approach call. But got there, I called the guy and I was on downwind and I, he uh, said, uh, Sir, could you switch runways to runway 8, which is the east runway? There's no wind on the field, and uh, uh, there's a vehicle on runway 36 chasing a dog. So 
I told him fine, and I landed on runway eight. As we landed, there was this green pickup bounding across the field there and chasing after a dog, and the guy in the right seat was leaning out the window shooting at it with a pistol. <laughs> I never saw anything like that before. <clears throat> Taxied to the ramp and uh, had a new terminal building there. Down at the end, you could tell that was the office and the gas pumps down there, so I parked on the ramp next to them, walked inside and told him to fill it with fuel. And uh, I said, have you got anything to eat around here? And he said, oh yeah, we've got vending machines up in the terminal. Uh, nice place up there. Just walk up this hall here. So Fried and I walked up there and got sandwiches. And uh, as I entered the terminal, the only other person there was the clerk for the uh, uh, commuter airline, and he was sitting there asleep. And uh, we got our sandwiches, sat down, and uh, started eating them. And about the time we finished that, they finished fueling the airplanes. So we hit the bathroom. That's the last thing you do before you get on an airplane is you use the bathroom. And uh, uh, as we were getting ready to go out the door, I pulled on the door and it opened and all hell broke loose. The Claxton horn started screaming and lights flashing and everything. And these two guys in green uniforms came bursting out a door with guns in their hands and. Uh, I told Fried, I said, don't move. <laughs> we liable to get shot here or something. And they said, you can't go out there on the ramp without going through security. And I said, well, that's my airplane sitting right out there. And they said, doesn't make any difference. you got to go through security before you can go onto the ramp. So we go down there, pull off our shoes. I put my change and whatnot in the dog dish. We go through the metal detector, do all their things. The inspectors want to know if we have any luggage. And finally they turned us loose and uh, as they opened the door for us to go free to ask him, <laughs> says, well, did, did you get the dog? And they said, no, uh, it, it escaped. I told the guy down there at the guest uh, counter and all he says, idiots. <laughs> so that's my story for the day. God bless America, God bless Texas, and you folks have a great day. I know I